Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, UAS Registration Task Force issues recommendations. Sennheiser bails out of GA, Tom Poboresny inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame. I'm Brie Cross, it's November 24th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The FAA has posted the recommendations of its UAS Registration Task Force on its website and says these recommendations will be added to the more than 4,500 public comments received to date by the agency and other data for crafting the final rule. No timeline has been set for issuing a final rule on UAV registration, which was originally supposed to be published in September of this year. The task force has recommended requiring UAV owners to provide their name and physical address as part of the registration process. The owner would then be issued a unique registration number, not an N number, that could be used on every aircraft owned by that individual. The task force also recommended that all UAVs weighing 250 grams or about one half pound be registered. Registration would not be required for aircraft that are designed to be flown only indoors. The FAA also said that those who already have registered their UAVs under the existing system with Section 333 exemptions would not be required to re-register their aircraft. There is no word yet regarding an implementation process for registering drones. Pilots are about to have one fewer choice when it comes to buying a new headset. Audio company Sennheiser says it plans to withdraw from the aircraft headset business as of March 2016. The company will fulfill all its obligations for servicing and spare parts throughout the full guarantee period for its headsets. Headsets for the air traffic control sector are not affected by this decision, but will continue to be marketed with the current ATC team under the responsibility of the joint venture Sennheiser Communications. The company said it will fulfill all its servicing and guarantee obligations. Generous transition periods have been agreed with airline and equipment partners. Quote, even after all legal obligations have expired, support can certainly be offered in individual cases, end quote, stated COO Peter Clausen. Air traffic control headsets are to remain part of the Sennheiser product portfolio, and the current ATC team will join the headset specialists at Sennheiser Communications from January 2016. After the break, Tom Pobresny is to be honored. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. It is with great pride that we at ANN are able to report that our friend, Tom Pobresny, the president and CEO of the Experimental Aircraft Association for more than 20 years and chairman of the annual EAA fly-in convention for more than three decades, is one of four renowned aviators who will enter the National Aviation Hall of Fame next October. EAA chairman and CEO Jack Pelton said, quote, We congratulate Tom on this well-deserved honor and upcoming induction into the National Aviation Hall of Fame. Tom's accomplishments as an aerobatic and airshow pilot on the national and international stages were noteworthy in themselves. But at the same time, he showed his ability and leadership by leading EAA into a new century while expanding its membership and influence throughout the aviation community." End quote. Tom was a part of the EAA staff beginning in 1969 and was elected EAA president in 1989 and served in that role until 2010. 
then as EAA chairman until 2011. During his tenure, EAA grew to more than 160,000 members in 100-plus countries. Tom's contributions to recreational aviation as an individual and through EAA could fill volumes. We congratulate Tom for receiving this well-deserved honor. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. However, when Old Man Winter hits and the air shows and fly-ins take some time off, there are still hundreds of aero locations that don't care about the cold weather. Here are some to think about. Let's start with some Florida locations for the Snowbirds. The Valiant Air Command Warbird Museum, located in Titusville, Florida, has a collection of over 45 historic warbirds from the beginning of aviation to the present day. The museum is an educational organization dedicated to the preservation of, education about, and commemoration of warbirds from all eras and the men and women who flew, maintained, and fought in them. It's located at the Space Coast Regional Airport. Sun and Fun and the Florida Air Museum, located in Lakeland, Florida, support year-round educational programs. These programs happen at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. Eleven buildings and a Boeing 727 classroom form the Aerospace Center for Excellence. This educational model forms a unique learning platform where each building serves as a common function of educating and inspiring the next generation of aerospace professionals while honoring the past. And for those of you that aren't afraid of a little winter, there's the National Model Aviation Museum located in Muncie, Indiana. It's right across the street from the headquarters of the Academy of Model Aeronautics. The museum and library are dedicated to collecting and preserving significant pieces of aero modeling. It tells the story of the history of the scientific, technical, and artistic legacy of model aviation. And if you have a favorite aero location that you would like to share with others, please let us know about it by emailing to earl at aero-news.net. After these messages, National Aviation Hall of Fame Class of 2016 is announced. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The National Aviation Hall of Fame has announced the names of four individuals who will be enshrined at its annual ceremony on October 1, 2016 in Dayton, Ohio. They are Captain Robert L. Crippen, the late Colonel George Day, Christopher Kraft Jr., and Tom Poberezny. The Canada-based R1 Airlines has become the first commercial operator to utilize an aircraft equipped with True Blue Power lithium-ion main aircraft batteries in revenue service. The on-demand charter service installed the TB44 battery on a Bombardier DHC-8-100 aircraft. Citation CJ3 owners have a new aftermarketing option for meeting mandate with the Rockwell Collins ProLine Flight Fusion flight deck upgrade. Duncan Aviation has partnered with Rockwell Collins as the installation provider. Certification is expected at the end of 2016. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Prescott Campus, Robertson Safety Institute, and Flight Research Incorporated solidified their ongoing relationship to provide education, certification, and advanced aviation training. The agreement offers joint professional certification programs in corporate flight safety. Quest Aircraft Company recently delivered the first Kodiak to the Philippines 
as well as receiving type certification for the aircraft from the country's Civil Aviation Authority. The Kodiak has also received Japanese certification, and two Kodiak float planes are on their way to Japan. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. If the sun suddenly gets blocked out by a large airborne airship, it could be because the FAA recently approved Lockheed Martin's project-specific certification plan for their hybrid airship. Lockheed Martin and the FAA have been working together for more than a decade to define the criteria to certify hybrid airships for the transport category. According to Lockheed Martin, hybrid airships can affordably transport heavy cargo to and from remote locations thanks to their unique shape and air cushion landing system. They require little to no fixed ground infrastructure and burn significantly less fuel compared to conventional aircraft. Earlier this year, Lockheed Martin, along with Hybrid Enterprises, LLC, kicked off sales for the 20-ton variety of the hybrid airship. They are on track to deliver operational airships as early as 2018. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.